Psalm 100. Shout, Shout for joy to the Lord, all, all the earth. earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. And his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through, through all generations. generations. This is Pastor Travis, and this is a quilt that my grandmother made for me. It reminds me of home and family, two things that I am very grateful for. I am thankful for the abundance that our country provides, and I have the freedom to worship the way I would like and to enjoy two great grandchildren. Hi, I'm Tracy. I'm in my bedroom. I'm grateful for many things, but one of the things I'm very grateful for during the winter is my heated mattress pad. I love it. Hi, this is Ann Agabeen. I am recording um, this video on what I am thankful for. I am thankful for my iPad because it's a way for me to connect with um, family across the country and friends and um, by email and by um, Zoom and Google Meets. My name is Kaylin and I'm thankful for my own room. We are thankful for our pets. I'm thankful for a new job that I start tomorrow. The Cruises are thankful that this year God sustained our son Caleb through two open heart surgeries and that he's back at college and gaining strength. I'm Aiden and this is my first trumpet. It reminds me that I'm thankful for God's gift of music. I am thankful for Spock Gnome. Say hello, Spock Gnome. Hello, Spock Gnome. Spock Gnome reminds me of the love, the humor, and general nerdiness that my parents and my friends have bestowed upon me. Hi, everyone. We're very thankful for our grandchildren and all of our family members. This is our granddaughter, Irene. At Thanksgiving time, we're thankful for little things and big things. Little things, coffee. Nectar of the gods. We're also thankful for big things. This is a binder that you get when you become a patient at Minnesota Oncology. And in it, you keep all your test results and your 
treatment instructions and your insurance stuff and all that. And um, you have it with you a lot when you're going through that. And we're thankful that we don't look at it much anymore. We are thankful for good health and for healing and for scans that continue to remind us uh, that the cancer is not active. Hello, my name is Ruby. My name is Lucy. And we are thankful for our puppies, Bee and Betty, the Golden Girls. Their birthday is next week on Thanksgiving Day. We are thankful them for them because they are very therapeutic and very loving. They, can, they cuddle with us a lot and they can tell when we're upset or sad. <laughs> we are the Van Hollands and this is a project we've been working on to help us remember what we're thankful for this season. Cora, can you say one feather that you put on the thankful turkey? What? What, what did you put on your feather? What? What are you thankful for? Um, the purple bear. Are you thankful for purple bear? Lucas, what's one thing you put on our thankful turkey? What are you thankful for? Mr. Hedgehog. Mr. Hedgehog, your special, special stuffed animal. And I am thankful for kids who are learning and growing. I'm thankful for the weather we're having, especially today, the kind of fall weather in what is starting the season of winter, so that we can spend more time outside with family and friends. Hello, we are Dennis and Christine Beekman, and the objects that remind us of something that we are thankful for are these gold bracelets. As many of you know, 17 months ago, our granddaughter Olivia was diagnosed with neuroblastoma, a form of juvenile cancer. We were given these yellow bracelets then as a tangible way to show solidarity with Olivia as she journeyed through her cancer treatments and as a reminder to pray for her. Yellow is the color that represents pediatric cancer. Olivia spent a great deal of these last 17 months at the hospital and has endured many chemotherapy and radiation sessions, surgery, two bone marrow transplants, and many drug treatments and all the side effects associated with those. But we we're so very thankful to report that now she's nearing the end of this aggressive treatment plan and is currently cancer free. What can be said other than to God be the glory? We are so grateful for God's healing power in Olivia's life. And we we're thankful for the army of prayer warriors that prayed and supported Olivia and her family. We are grateful to you too, our Faith Church family who faithfully prayed on their behalf. Well, happy Thanksgiving to you. This is Pastor Adam here with our scripture for the day. And as you could probably guess, our Thanksgiving scripture is a song of thanks. But you probably wouldn't guess where it is found because the book is called Habakkuk or Habakkuk. I think it's properly Habakkuk, written by a prophet in the 600s, um, which was probably during the time where Israel had been taken captive or was being taken captive by Babylon. And there was scarcity in the land. It was a time of great loss for the people in, on every level imaginable. And yet, uh, the book of Habakkuk is very similar to a lot of psalms that we hear, where the psalm begins with devastation and loss and sadness and anguish, and it ends in some song of praise. And the book of Habakkuk ends similarly in a song, and it's a song of praise, and we're going to pick up in verse 17. So Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. Listen then for the voice of God. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the heights for the director of music on my stringed instruments. This is the word of the Lord. Well, it's Thanksgiving, and at the same time, it's almost Advent, which begins on Sunday. And so some of you 
I'm sure, have already gotten your Christmas trees up and uh, are listening to Christmas music, while others are thinking that it's way too soon for that. And um, as for my own house, we're pretty divided. We Some people want the Christmas tree to go up before Thanksgiving, some on Thanksgiving, and some after. Um, so you can't please everyone, but uh, it, I was thinking of a Christmas story. So please forgive me if this is a little early for it. But the Christmas story is called A Christmas Carol. And you're likely familiar with it either in the uh, Charles Dickens version or in the Disney version where Scrooge is played by Donald Duck. And in both cases and in both stories, there is a, a family, the Cratchit family, that has very, very little. And they're a family that uh, is barely getting by and... Uh, the youngest is ill, Tiny Tim. And they're juxtaposed or contrasted uh, by Bob Cratchit's employer, Ebenezer Scrooge. And Scrooge has so much money and yet is so empty uh, around Christmas and not grateful whatsoever. There's no, uh, no lack that he has as far as finances. He has all the money he could use and then some, but still there is no gratitude in his heart. Um, he's not willing to give and to give thanks. And as you can guess, thanks and giving is what God has called his people to do and what Habakkuk, I think, does a good job doing in the midst of a terrible situation. Habakkuk says that uh, no matter whether these things uh, are not, whether the crops are failing or whether there are no sheep or cattle to eat um, and to live off of, I will rejoice in the Lord. I'll be joyful in God, my Savior. And the question is, why? Why would that be a response that anyone gives? And the question is not just for someone who would possibly be looking at Habakkuk's life, but it's also someone who might look at uh, the Psalms that end in praise and even despite difficult circumstances. And also those who... Um, may have noticed it in lives of friends or family around them. I know of some folks that have had some terrible life circumstances and have every reason to, as uh, Job's wife suggests, curse God and die. And yet, in the midst of their suffering, they give thanks to God. And... In the midst of this time of COVID, it's easy to get stuck on what we don't have. Um, Thanksgiving, we look around the table and we may be looking at empty chairs. Some of us might even be feeling scarcity in terms of where our next meal is gonna come from. We might be concerned about it down the road that Again, we're going to face shortages and lack in our country. Perhaps there are those who are uh, not feeling afraid of physical or of material poverty, but they're afraid of physical loss. And on this Thanksgiving, there's a reminder that that body is just not functioning the way that it should and the way that it has in the past. And so there's this great sense of scarcity that makes us want to pull inward. It makes us want to hold on to those few things that we do have. Uh, so it makes us want to hold on to our money tighter. It makes us want to hold on to that food that we have a little closer. It makes us not want to reach out, um, but instead um, to turn in. And... It's a common response. What's not a common response is 
singing. And at the end of Habakkuk, there's a line that it seems like a castaway line that says, for the director of music on my stringed instruments, or as Eugene Peterson translates it in the message, um, for the congregation with full orchestra. This song is to be sung in the midst of the worst of times. And it's to be sung by the congregation. It's to be sung by those who are gathering around uh, the table, so to speak, with all different experiences, all different circumstances, and yet are going to be worshiping God together. And that's the image I want us to focus on for today, this Thanksgiving, and to think on and dwell on, is that coming together of God's people who are able to spend their time meditating on who God is and therefore have a song to sing and therefore are able to say, in spite of everything, I lift my hands in praise. And it's so counter to what we might be feeling when we want to pull inward that we would reach outward. That act of singing is in some sense an act of rebellion, but it's a perfect act of rebellion um, for those of us who are saying no to the way that the devil would have us be. Um, No to self-centeredness, no to being inward focused and yes to God and yes to God's purposes and plans and yes to sharing with others. When I think about how I've seen it personally, I've, of course, I never saw Paul and Silas in jail who sang in the prison cell. I have been in prisons where I've heard Christian brothers and sisters singing together. And that's a beautiful, beautiful moment. But perhaps even more poignantly is when I hear songs that arise from the black church tradition, especially that came out of African-American slavery and those who were out in the fields who literally didn't know where their next meal would come from, who were often separated from loved ones. And yet, in the midst, God did something awesome and awe-inspiring. God brought into this um, group that should be hopeless a deep sense of hope, a deep sense of trust in him. And some of our greatest songs are our spirituals that come from the fields uh, where slaves were held against their will, but they offered through their own free will these songs back to God because God had stirred something in them. And um, I have a link if you would like to to check it out later. There's a song by Fred Hammond that I really love. Uh, It's called When We Praise or When You Praise. And in that song, he says, Praise will bind, confuse, and break the enemy and cause his hands to be still. So we raise our hands in total victory. We know we triumph in his will. And that's the message of Habakkuk, that we triumph in God's will in spite of all the outward circumstances, because of who God is, we can rest in him, we can trust in him, and we can rejoice in him. And another way that um, that we can show thanks to God in addition to singing is by giving. So it makes sense, right? There's thanks, where we give our thanks to God, where we sing, uh, where we make music, and praise God like we've uh, we've done on Sundays and we'll have an opportunity to do after this short meditation um, as we'll have another song to sing. But there's also, in addition to that, there's also the giving part where we have um, the opportunity to give, whether that's from our own finances and our own gifts, um, which are certainly welcome by many at this time. There are so many in need. 
it perhaps is through good work or a good, um, I don't want to say deed, but that's what the Heidelberg Catechism would say, a good deed um, or a good work. And as the Catechism says, we, we show with our whole lives uh, that we are thankful to God for his benefits so that he may be praised through us. And so when we give thanks through song or when we give and do good, these are God-inspired responses. And so in the midst of a season where uh, the sensible thing would be to hang our heads um, in disappointment that things are not the way that they should be, let's consider the prophet Habakkuk. Let's consider those spirituals sung in the fields by slaves. Let's consider even, though it's fiction, the Cratchit family that Ebenezer Scrooge peered in through the window and, and saw them celebrating and singing even though they didn't have two nickels to rub together. Let's consider these gifts of thanks and giving, which are a reflection uh, and a reminder that God himself has given us everything in Jesus Christ. And Jesus gave thanks, and he also gave of himself, uh, even to death on the cross, so that we could have life through him. Um, may that be what centers us this Thanksgiving, and what prompts us to return to a place of singing and of giving. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it was written by people just like us. People who have gone through adversity, people who have struggled and failed, people who are not sure of what the future holds. And yet people who know that there is a God who loves them, who desires to be known, and who will one day make all things right. God, we pray um, for those of us in our congregation um, who are missing others, loved ones, or feeling uh, the sense of loss that can come at this time of year. We pray for those of us who are feeling well um, and joyful in our circumstances. May we all together raise up a song of thanks. And may we all together, um, through your spirit, give to one another out of the abundance that comes from you. It's in Jesus' name and for his sake that we pray. Amen. Thanks. Stay.
We hope you're all having a wonderful Thanksgiving, everyone. We love you all. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. From our home to yours, wishing you a thankful Thanksgiving.